stellar exploration is the new found adventure. On the asteroid Vesta, halfway between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter, is the small spaceport of Kronos, supply center to space miners. Here, in this isolated watering hole, exist prospectors, gamblers, pirates, and cutthroats of every persuasion. Our story is about these daring and ruthless men who risk their lives in search of precious stones and metals in the icy tomb of deep space and journey upon the threshold of alien worlds. Spaceport Kronos, the Rising Star Saloon, Saturday night. Raise 300. Oh, I'm out. Oh, me too. Well, that leaves just you and me, dude. Like I said before, my name is Silverthorn. Travis Silverthorn. Uh -huh. Sorry, dude, I'm not much good with names. <laughs> you might want to remember mine. I see your 300. And raise you 3,000. What? You heard me. I only have 2,000. Too bad. Dude. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I have a ship. I have a 98 dart. What do you say? For 1,000? <laughs> Where is it? It's out in the lot, number four. That clunker? Hey, look, it leads in a little paint. That's all. It's got an FTL overdrive. Faster than light? That's right. The FTL unit alone is worth 1,000. All right. You calling? You know it. Three queens. Damn. <laughs> well, gentlemen, thanks. Not bad for the first part of the night. Um, whose deal is it? What the hell was that? That old scrounge over there. He just came running into this place and shot off his blaster. Shh. He's trying to say something. Glowstone. Did he say Glowstone? Well, there goes the game. Glowstone. Glowstone's been discovered on Calamar. Glowstone? Calamar? Meanwhile, high above Earth, Star Lab, the spinning observatory wheel drifts silently peacefully through space. Aboard Star Lab, research director Maura Cassidy and her assistant Tim ready the giant telescopes for a close-hand look at the new frontier. Dr. Cassidy, you're early. I know, Tim, but I'm anxious to get a look at the planet. Besides, Commissioner White has ordered a 24-hour surveillance of Calamar. Mycroft is moving the 900-inch scope into position now. The 900? What's wrong with the big one? It's working. On spectral analysis. Two more hours. Oh, well, we can't wait. Delta One will be here any minute, and I want Calamar on the viewer when Graydon and Griff arrive. Why are they coming here to Star Lab first? Calamar's in the opposite direction. I don't know, Tim. They didn't tell me. I can't believe it was just yesterday that news of the Glowstone strike got out. It seems like everybody's going to Calamar. Well, I wouldn't mind going there myself. What for, Dr. Cassidy? Well, for one thing, I've never even seen a grain of glowstone, much less the rocks rumored to exist on Calamar. Will you settle for a good look right now? The scope's ready. Well, then turn on the viewer, Tim. Let's see this new frontier. Right, Dr. Cassidy. Viewer on. Ooh. Is that what all the fuss is about? Captain Griff. Well, that's it, all right. That's Calamar. It hardly looks worth the effort. Well, what about you, John? What do you think? Huh. It looks hot. Just 200 degrees at noon is all. Oh, and I forgot to pack my cocoa butter. <laughs> Can you tell us anything else, Maura? Well, not much. A double sun accounts for the hot days. Nights, on the other hand, are cool and very dark. There is no moon. Most plant and animal life will probably be nocturnal. It's really a fascinating world. If only we knew more about it. Well, we'll give you a complete report when we get back. How long are you going to be gone? Oh, a week or so. Until the ISA can set up a permanent command post there. I don't understand why you two went out of your way to come here before going on to Calamar. Um, well, an ISA directive, Maura. Uh, Commissioner White's orders. But why? You tell her, buddy. Oh, thanks, pal. Uh, well, you see, Maura... 
the chief told us to leave Delta One here at Star Lab. Then how will you get back to Calamar? Uh, in Star Lab's cruiser. Columbus! <laughs> the heck you will! You're not touching my ship! Now, come on, Maura. Be reasonable. We need the shuttle from Columbus. I don't care. Forget it. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Cassidy. Yes, Tim. What is it? You said you wanted to go to Calamar. Here's the perfect opportunity. Yes. Hmm, so it is. Thanks, Tim. Okay, John, you can take my ship on one condition. Uh-oh, Skipper. Take me with you. Oh, now, just a minute, more. I have some field time coming anyway, and all my equipment is already aboard Columbus, so it's settled. I'll go get ready. Hey, Skipper, <laughs> we sure handled that well. Yeah, well, maybe it's a good thing she's coming along, buddy. We can use the help. As Graydon and Griff prepare to disembark Star Lab for Calamar, early prospector arrivals begin on the small planet. Mark Robbins and Lee Johnson are among the first. Good thing we left the landing lights on. It's really dark out here. Yeah, but we have to work at night. It's too hot during the daylight, you know that. Besides, we've already lost time, so we'd better get busy. You sure these hills are the best place to look for glowstone? Yeah, they're a good place to start, Lee. Now you unpack the scanner, and uh, I'll set up the auxiliary Wait lights. A shh. Shh. What's wrong? I thought I heard something. Well, I don't hear anything. There, listen. Uh, yeah. yeah, I do hear it now. Sounds like a herd of animals or something. Don't worry about it. Oh, there's something eerie about that sound. I said, don't worry about it. Come on, let's get to work. From the blackness of Calamar's night comes an omen. What lies ahead on this tiny distant planet remains an unknown, shrouded in mystery on alien worlds. wave of unruly space prospectors, a chaotic infiltration of the planet Calamar. Anticipating the outbreak of lawlessness, the International Space Authority intervenes. Acting on ISA orders, a space exploration team is sent to Calamar to begin preparations for the arrival of an ISA security fleet and the establishment of a permanent command post. Starlab's interstellar cruiser Columbus is en route. SET commanders John Graydon and Buddy Griff, along with Starlab research director Maura Cassidy, are on board. Skipper, we're getting a distress signal heading 049er. Open channel 8, buddy. ISA cruiser Columbus calling vessel at 049er. We read your flag. Open communications on channel 8. Over. What's going on? Oh, some idiot probably ran out of photons. Oh, thank God you guys showed up. I'll bet 50 ships passed me by without even slowing down. I'm sorry, pal, but we'll be doing the same. What? Oh, come on. You can't leave me. Hey, Skipper, I, I think I know that guy. Do you mind? Okay, buddy, go ahead, but I'm not stopping. Hello, Travis. Travis Silverthorne, is that you? Yeah, who are you? It's me, buddy. Buddy, you fool. Stop that ship right now and pick me up. Hey, Skipper, what do you say? I already said, buddy. But Travis is like a, like a brother. I don't care, buddy. We don't have the time. Skipper, he saved my life when we were kids. Oh, damn it, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, Skipper. Hello, Travis. Hold on, we're coming alongside. As Captain Griff aids a distressed friend, Dr. Cassidy receives an emergency call from Star Lab. That's right, Dr. Cassidy. Spectral analysis indicates a little flare-up when Calamar's double sun. How intense, Tim? Strong enough to knock out any and all radio communication within 19 parsecs of Calamar. <sighs> okay, thanks for the report, Tim. I'll be in touch. Great, huh? You heard. Yeah. Without any radio communication on Calamar, things could get sticky. Any idea how long the solar flare-ups might last? I'd just be guessing. John, Maura, I'd like you to meet my old friend Travis Silverthorne.
Travis. Appreciate the ride, Captain. <laughs> it's all right, Travis. Uh, what happened to your ship, Travis? Oh, it was a piece of junk I won in the card game on Cronus. Not worth going back for. Say, uh, you wouldn't be headed for Kalamar by any chance, would you? We sure are. Fantastic. Back on Kalamar's night side, prospectors Mark Robbins and Lee Johnson continue their search for glowstone. Out of the black depths, a mysterious sound draws closer. I think they're getting closer, Mark. Oh, you stop worrying about that noise. It's probably a natural phenomenon. Well, natural or not, I got a bad feeling about it. Hey, what do you say we break camp and set up in another location? Oh, Lee, come on. You got prospector jitters. Listen, the sound, it, it stopped. You see there? Nothing to worry about. Like I said, it's a natural phenomenon. Natural phenomenon, yeah, sure. Well, that's it. We've entered the area affected by Calamar's sun. We no longer have any radio communication with anyone. We'll need to keep a monitor on the radio at all times. Hey, Skip, me and Travis are throwing a party to celebrate our reunion. You want to join us? Oh, no thanks, buddy. B but go ahead, just don't overdo it, huh? <laughs> right, Skip. How about you, Maura? Would you like to have a drink with us? Well, I... Oh, no. go ahead, Maura. We have time before we get to Calamar. Okay, why not? All right, we'll be in the galley, Skipper. Well, tell me, Mr. Silverthorne, Please, what Please, is... Maura, call me Travis. Okay, Travis. What draws you to Calamar? Plan on doing any prospecting? Well, in a manner of speaking, I guess you could. <laughs> if I know Travis, he'll be mining the miners. And that means? I will be playing cards. Ah. Okay, here we are. Martian physics okay? Sure, fine. Okay by me. You know, I've never seen glowstone. No kidding? I, uh, just happen to have a piece with me. Really? Oh, I'd love to see it. It's just a speck, but it's enough to see the value. To get the full effect of glowstone, you have to see it in the dark. Oh, oh buddy, will you please turn off the lights? Sure. Oh, it's beautiful. I've never seen such rich colors before. So bright, pure, and warm. Think she likes it, buddy? <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to tell. The glowstone is supposedly an aphrodisiac, too, you know. No, I didn't, but I'm not surprised. Oh, wow. You two want to be left alone? Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's not the reason it's so valuable. That's right. That much I do know. Glowstone is a perfect energy source. Small, clean, safe. Doesn't get hot, and yet the energy it releases can be put to thousands of uses. And on top of all of that, it's one of the rarest minerals in the universe. This little speck of mine is worth close to a hundred thousand. I've met men who are willing to kill for a piece half this size. And almost as many who are willing to die for it. The value of glowstone cannot be denied. But neither can the dangers of mining it. As two young prospectors draw closer to a confrontation with the unknown on Calamar. It's been a half hour, Lee, and no more howls. If anything was there, it's gone now. No, I don't think so, Mark. They're out there all around us. I can feel them. Maybe we should just get back to work, Are huh? you kidding? That's just what they're waiting for. Well, we can't sit here all night. Besides, I've scanned the whole place. There is nothing here to fear. But, Mark... But there... nothing. Now, give me that blaster and wait here. Where are you going? I'm going to prove my point. I'll fire the blaster a couple of times over by that rock. If nothing happens, then maybe we can get back to work, okay? And if something does happen? Well, then you're going to have a front row seat. But nothing will happen. Now watch. Hey, what happened to the lights? Mark? Mark! What in the name of God is that? Mark, where are you? of a mining camp on Calamar, a scream of terror and silence of death. 
What strange creatures stalk the blackness and lure these helpless miners into horror? An excursion into the arcane on Alien Worlds. Mysterious, hostile creatures attack a prospector camp on Calamar. A search for glowstone ends in terror. Lawless disorder sweeps the planet as prospectors and pirates arrive in search of the precious stone. A space exploration team enters Calamar's orbit, sent by the International Space Authority to subdue the madness. How hot it looks down there, Mora. At least the nights are pleasant, John. I'm sure most of the miners do their work at night. What about solar screens during the day? Even under a solar screen, it would still be 120 degrees or so. A little hot to be doing hard labor. Yeah, I'll say. You know, I never liked the desert, even on Earth. I think I'll stay up here and let the rest of you take the first EVA. So now all I have to do is find Buddy and Travis. I think they went up to the launch deck. Hey, just a minute, I'll go with you. Okay. You know, Travis, seeing you again reminds me of the first time we left Earth together, remember? Oh, how could I forget? I can't believe we ever got past the moon and that old government surplus. A wombat, wasn't it? <laughs> it was a wombat, all right. That old fossil fueler. <laughs> I'll bet they're still talking about our last night on Mars. Well, I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse us, you two. If you're looking for a shuttle crew, we're ready. Good, because we're going down. Oh, right. But wait, Skipper. Someone has to stay. Yeah, I'll stay, buddy. Uh, the three of you can go. Right. Well, come on. Uh, buddy? Yeah? Listen, whatever you do, don't land. Why not? With the radios out, I just don't want to take any chances, that's all. Just look around and then report back here after your EVA. Okay, Skip. Boy, you sure know how to take the fun out of an EVA. As the EVA crew prepares to descend from the cruiser Columbus, other preparations are underway on Earth. An ISA security fleet, commanded by Captain Richard Baker, prepares to depart for Calamar and set up a permanent command post. Uh, Captain Baker. Uh, yes, Lieutenant, what is it? I have that recording of the last transmission from Calamar, sir, just before the signal faded completely. Good, Lieutenant. Let's hear it. Mayday, Mayday. The weapons 1906. We're under attack. They're coming out of nowhere. Weapons are The light. It's the light. That's where it ends, sir. Was he saying light? Apparently. But we can't figure out why. The coordinates are from Calamar's dark side. An EVA shuttle streaks across Calamar's ebony skies into the planet's night side. Aboard, Captain Buddy Griff... Travis Silverthorne and Maura Cassidy observing the planet's surface through an infrared scanner. Altitude leveling off at 10,000. Speed 900 and dropping. I can't understand it, buddy. There's, uh, there's no lights down there. There's no sign of mining camps or laser drills. There's, there's nothing but darkness. I have to admit it, Travis. It does seem strange. Will you two relax? We're flying over a huge plains area. Any mining operations are bound to be in the hills, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, can you see anything at all down there, Mora? Mm, scattered plant life and what appears to be a giant herd of animals. I'm taking us down closer. This is strange. What's strange? I can see several mining camps. But... So? Well, they appear to have been totally destroyed, like they were hit by a tornado. I knew something was wrong. Is there any sign of survivors? No. Wait! Wait, uh, slow down! Okay, okay, give me a chance. What do you see, Maura? What do you see? A group of men. Some of them look injured. They're, they're standing together near some caves. They're trying to get our attention. So why don't they turn on a light if they want us to see them? Only one way to answer that question, buddy. I think you're right, pal. We've got to land this bird. But, Buddy, John just said that we can... You said some of those men were hurt, Mara. We've got to help them. That's why we're here. I suppose you're right. I know I am. 
Hit the landing lights, will you, Travis? Right. There. Now, that's more like it. Now we can see, too. Yeah. There are the men that Morrow was... Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They're running away. They're running away like scared rabbits. Yeah. They're heading straight for the caves. They panicked as soon as you turned on the lights. Touchdown. Let's get out there and find out what's going on. Turn off your lights. The creatures are coming. Who are you? What are you talking about? You're in great danger. It's the night riders. They've seen your lights. They're attracted by light. There are hundreds of them. They will be here any minute. Okay, okay. Quick, turn off the lights, Travis. Right. The only way to save your ship is to leave now. Buddy, listen. It's them. They're coming, I tell you. I'll take a look through the infrared binoculars. Oh, hurry. They can't be stopped. They'll tear your ship to pieces and us too if we don't get out of here. What is that? It's the Night Riders. Night Riders? Maura, can you see anything through the binoculars? Can I ever? They're coming this way, all right. There must be several hundred of them. Several hundred what? Strange creatures. Reptilian, I think, but huge. They're riding on the backs of those animals I saw earlier. My God, I don't believe it. What is it? What is it? They don't have any eyes. But how can they leave? There isn't much time. You must leave. He's right. They've already reached the foothills. Okay, let's go. Everyone in the shuttle. You too, mister. Thank you. Thank you. All systems on, buddy. All right. Preliminary ignition. Set. Uh-oh. What's the matter, buddy? Ah, uh, misfire. Again. Let me out of here. I want out. Relax, will you? All right, baby. Come on. Damn it. I'm getting out of here. Now. All right, that's it. Abandon ship. Head for the caves. Right, buddy. Ah! Okay, be careful, Moro. Watch your step. Come on, buddy, hurry. Okay, okay. My God! Look at them! What are they? I don't think they're Indians, Mora. I, I don't believe it. Look! Look, they're tearing the shuttle apart! What are we gonna do, buddy? How are we gonna contact John now? Let's worry about that later. Quick, let's get under cover. In here! In the caves! Buddy, Mora, and Travis find themselves trapped, overrun by strange, sightless alien creatures. Unable to contact John Graydon high above them, aboard Columbus, they appear to be hopelessly stranded in darkness. Their shuttle has been torn to pieces by the Night Riders of Calamar. Indeed, a phantasm of consternation on alien worlds. discovery on distant Calamar elicits the reactions of space miners from every corner of the galaxy. Glowstone's been discovered on Calamar. In an effort to control the lawlessness, the International Space Authority sends an SET in to establish a permanent command post there. Deciding to shuttle down, Mora, Travis, and Buddy depart the mothership, Columbus, aboard a small craft. What do you see, Mora? What do you see? A group of men. Some of them look injured. They're, they're standing together near some caves. They're trying to get our attention. So why don't they turn on a light if they want us to see them? Only one way to answer that question, Buddy. I think you're right, Bill. We've got to land this bird. Upon setting the small craft down on the surface of Calamar, a turn of events would make it appear as though they might never get off the planet at all. Turn off your lights. The creatures are coming. The night riders. They've seen your lights. They are attracted by light. Buddy, listen. It's them. They're coming, I tell you. They're coming this way, all right. There must be several hundred of them. Several hundred what? Strange creatures. Reptilian, I think. Huge. They're riding on the backs of those animals I saw earlier. My God, I don't believe 
believe it. What is it? What is it? They don't have any eyes. But how they appear to be hopelessly stranded in darkness. Their shuttle has been torn to pieces by the night riders of Calamar. Indeed, a phantasm of consternation on alien worlds. As the charging hoofbeats of the Night Riders fade into the depths, Buddy, Mora, Travis, and the miners seek refuge in a Calamar cave. A lot of these men are hurt, Buddy. They need medical attention. The ISA fleet will be arriving any time. They'll have a hospital ship with them and plenty of medics. Well, I could sure use an aspirin. What's wrong, Travis? Oh, I just got a little headache. I'll be all right. Uh, look, uh, I'm going to go outside and get a breath of air. Could I use the infrared binoculars, Mora? Oh, sure. Here. Thanks. Hey, Travis. Yeah? Be careful. I'm always careful. Buddy, where are you? I'm right here. <gasps> Buddy, don't do that. Do what, my dear? I'm just standing here. You bumped into me. Well, it's too dark in here to just stand around. Do something. <laughs> Who's that? It's okay. I'm a prospector. What's your name? Robertson. Don Robertson. Did you, uh, find any glowstone? Sure did. Hit a strike about two weeks ago. You alone? Well, I am now. I had a partner till the day before yesterday. He's dead now. What happened? Night Riders get him? Nope. He just fell over. Just like that. <sighs> well, what happened? I mean, what did he die from? I, I don't know. He, he was fine up till three or four days ago. Started complaining of headaches. Then he started getting dizzy and falling over things. Next thing I knew, he was laying dead on the ground. Then I got overrun by those freaky lizards, busted up our ship, lost all the glowstone. Oh, I wish I'd never come here. Oh, who's that? Who is it? Oh, it's, uh, it's only me. Travis. What happened? Well, I... I tripped. No big deal. It's not easy walking through this cave looking through these binoculars at the same time, you know. Hey, guess what I found outside? A poker game. Oh, nope. A shuttle truck. A land shuttle? Truck. That's right. One of the miners must have abandoned it. It's a little banged up, but I think I can make it run. Run? Run where? Well, we could follow the night Riders. What? Follow them where? Why? Because it's better than sitting around here in the dark. That's why. Wait! Maybe following him is a good idea. Wait, what is this, mutiny? No, in fact, we should follow them. Well, look, don't you see? We need to study them, learn about them, find out why they're destroying the mining camp. Sounds like you're planning to tag along. Well, of course I am. I'm a scientist. I didn't come here to ignore the native life. I came to study it. All right. All right, I'll, I'll stay here and see what I can do for these people. You two go ahead. Uh, but try and be back before dawn, okay? Otherwise, you're liable to get a real mean tan, you know what I mean? Meanwhile, back aboard Columbus, John Graydon sits quietly in solitude. It's been nearly five hours. Where could they be? Something's happened, and I sit here doing nothing. Well, no more. I'll land this monster by myself. Carefully. See anything yet, Mora? Nothing but the tracks. But we're on the right trail. How are you doing? Well, it's not the driving. It's not being able to see where I'm going. Don't worry about it. I'll direct you. Well, wait a minute. Slow down. What, what is it? Turn left 10 degrees. We're coming up on a cliff or a crevice or something. Well, wait, no, it's a, it's a crater. The animal tracks lead into it. Ow! Don't stop so fast, Travis. Oh, I'm sorry, Mora. Uh, let me take a look. Here. Hmm. Hmm. The sides of the crater are too steep for the truck. We'll have to go the rest of the way on foot. Well, that won't be easy in this darkness. And we only 
only have one pair of infrared binoculars. Well, you walk alongside of me. My turn to guide us with the binoculars. Maybe we should hold hands? Mm, I thought you'd never ask. Now, careful now. Watch your step. You watch your step. How do you focus these things anyway? They're a little blurry. Are you nearsighted? Oh, yeah, why? Push the little button on the top right side. Hmm? Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's better. What's that? I don't know. I don't see anything. Just a lot of rocks. Travis? Oh, no, Mora. Mora, we're surrounded by them. Don't move. Get out! Get out! Get away from us! Two-legged, reptilian creatures drag them helplessly into the dark abyss, deep into the underground, and into the dominion of alien worlds. An SET crew of four arrives on Calamar. A three-member group sets down on the planet's surface and are overrun by strange, sightless alien creatures. The fourth crew member, John Graydon, having not heard from the others for several hours, decides to solo fly the giant ship in for a landing. Infrared scanner's up. Good. Okay. Between those hills, I'll try and land there. Big and flat. What? <laughs> Instruments are picking up debris. Uh-oh, it's a shuttle wreckage. Coordinates 8, 9, or 3. Oh, no, I'm coming in too fast. I'll reverse thrusters. Oh. Oh, my head. Travis, are you all right? Oh, Maura. What happened? Where are we? We've been captured by the Night Riders. I wasn't sure if you were going to come to or not. How long have I been out? A few hours, maybe. I've lost track of time down here. Down here? Down where? Where are we? Deep underground in a, in a cavern. The creatures have us sealed off in this room. We're trapped. Travis, move over here with me, please. I... I, I, I can't move, Mora. I seem to be paralyzed. the calamar cool suit. Yeah, in the survival equipment hold. Where were they said it'd be? Oh, buddy, thank goodness you're alive. Where are the others? They took out after the night creatures. Night creatures? Yeah. Oh, boy. Really weird aliens riding hooved creatures overran us on the shuttle. I told you not to land. There was something in the briefing tapes about that. Uh, said it was a, a mythical legend. Well, there's nothing mythical about it, John. They're definitely real. And Mora, Travis, uh, did you say they went after them? Yeah. Travis found a shuttle truck. Huh. Well, I hope they don't get hurt. Look, I'll go back to the Columbus and, uh, and get the other solitarian spacesuits. And then you can help me get what medical supplies we've got up there to help the rest. Okay, but hurry back. Right. Put the earth people down, Tardos. Oh, oh, my head. My head hurts. Mora. Mora, he talked. Mora? Mora, are you there? Yes. Yeah, I'm here. I'm just trying to get my breath back. Quiet. Do not move, or we will kill you. Oh, don't worry, pal. Don't worry. We're not going anywhere. I can't see a thing in here. See? Ah, yes. Earthlings can see a most bizarre ability. We've come to learn about you. You've come to destroy us. No! No, we've no intentions of harming you. I am Cretan, leader of Troben. We are of this world, not you. You speak English. How? Our translatory linguistic ability is of your galaxy. 
Jesus. You are not the first of your kind to enter our world. Why have you attacked our people? You bring the great pain. Whose pain you talking about, pal? What you call light to us is pain. It is the poison of our wavelength. But how do you perceive light if you're blind? Blindness is relative only to your spectrum of perception. We are of telepathic senses. You are disrupting our wavelength, altering our sensibilities. You must leave Palomar. But what about sunlight and glowstone? Enough talk. Wait, you don't understand. We represent the... You are an invasion to our universe. We are not compatible. What do you plan on, on doing with us? We will display your death to your people without mercy. Then they will know our power and they will leave. Oh, come on, pal. You don't want to do that. I've got too many poker games left. Besides, the miners won't leave. They could care less about us, believe me. Silence. It is done. We ride when nighttime is again full. A terminus plan by the leader of the Troman promises the doom of Mora and Travis at sundown. An exhibition in death by the night riders of Calamar as darkness slowly overcasts this alien world. Dusk approaches on an alien planet a public execution awaits Mora and Travis, now prisoners of the Night Riders of Calamar. Meanwhile, an ISA fleet streaks across the heavens into Calamar orbit. The radios are working again, Captain Baker, but there's no response from the planet's surface from anyone. What about the ISA cruiser Columbus? Have you located its orbit? She's sitting on the ground, abandoned. All right, Lieutenant. Get a landing party together. Let's get down there and find out what's going on. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, I also have a priority mission report from ISA headquarters. Uh, seems there's been a new development at Jerdell on the glowstone tests. Let me see it. Hmm. Very interesting. Mora? Hmm? Mora, I just had a realization. About what? Glowstone. What? I'm going to reveal it to the Night Riders. I have a feeling glowstone is different from other forms of light energy. It's true. We know it's in a spectrum of super high ultraviolet energy, much higher than synthetic light. That's right. It could affect them totally different. Go ahead. It could save our skins. Hmm. Here they come. And here goes. Put the glowstone away. Man. What? What do you mean? I said, put the glowstone away, out of exposure. It is very dangerous to us. We will die in minutes. I've got a full hand, pal. I'll put it away when you ensure me you'll listen to what we've got to say. Go on, it's your deal. All right, I think. As you wish, we will listen. Hey, hey, Mora. Look, the, the glowstone went out. It's no longer emitting any light. Do as he says, Travis. Put it away. Oh, all right. I wonder why it stopped glowing. It didn't, Travis. What do you mean, it didn't? Hey. Hey, wait a minute. You mean... You're going blind, Travis. Oh, no. Oh. Travis, what is it? Go. Go. Oh, oh. My, my head, it, 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 it's exploding. Oh, Oh, Laura. Laura, I... I... Uh, I... I feel like I... Like I'm dying. You're not dying, Travis. I... Oh, I can't... I can't stand the... The pressure in my head. Travis! Don't... 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 Don't, don't touch me, Laura. Don't touch me. Oh, I can't believe it. I... I just had a full hand. I had the game. What happened, Mora? What happened? Travis! Travis! Your friend is dead. <laughs> yes, he's dead. 
That is why we attacked your people, for destroying our wavelength. But how do you know of this affecting humans? All we know is that certain ones in your world are victims of the light plague. It is a weakness in the eyes of humans that causes death. Kraken, please, you've got to help me get back to my people, so that I may warn them of this. I am with the ISA. I can put a stop to all this and help your Troman as well. I have observed you, Earth Woman. You show compassion. I am also quite fascinated by your reaction to your friend's death. Yes, I will take you to your people. Can you ensure us they will not attempt an attack? If we go in peace... There will be no attack. Then, so be it. Tardos, prepare to ride to the Earthling encampment. Captain Baker, SCT Commanders John Graydon and Buddy Griff. Thank you, Lieutenant. Welcome to YSA Security Command, gentlemen. Thank you, Captain Baker. We've just received a special report on Glowstone from the Dredell Institute. I think you should be made aware of it. Oh, yeah? What did the boys in the lab come up with now? Well, it seems that since the discovery of glowstone on Calamar six weeks ago, three of the ten scientists involved with the experiments have died. From what? The glowstone? The cause of death was diagnosed as a brain hemorrhage. Just exactly how the glowstone causes this remains a mystery. We're expecting further information shortly. Then glowstone is harmful to humans? Not all humans. The other seven scientists were unaffected. Captain! Captain! They're here! The Night Riders are approaching from the southeast quadrant, sir! Let me have those glasses, Lieutenant. There are several hundred of them. Wait! In the lead formation. I... I don't believe it. One of the creatures has a woman with it. Mora? Uh, let me see, Captain. Holy Jupiter, it is Mora. But... Where's Travis? Mora, are you all right? Yes, buddy, I'm fine. Where's Travis? He's, uh, he's dead. Travis? Dead? Oh, come on, Doc, you're putting us on. That old buzzard will live to be a hundred. I'm afraid it's true. But how? What, ha what happened to him? I'm not sure. But he had all the symptoms of a brain hemorrhage. What? Captain, we've just gotten another report from Jadell. I think you should take a look at this, Dr. Cassidy. It may answer a few questions. Well, what's in it? What's it say? The scientists that died had a vision deficiency. They were nearsighted. Glowstone emits a kind of light wave that triggers a spasm of the optic nerves and then creates an aneurysm. What's that? A ballooning of the blood vessels. They actually explode, and that's a brain hemorrhage. Oh, God. The final poker game. On Calamar. It was through Travis's death that I was able to discover a great deal about the Night Riders. The Glowstone Underground is their planetary guidance system. It's how they see. And our mining it has disrupted that? That's right. We're initiating martial law here. The planet will be closed off to all incoming personnel probably open only to scientific studies, provided we can reach an accord with the aliens here. That won't be a problem now. The ISA has issued a search and seizure of all glowstone in the star system. Until we better understand its effect on people with eye deficiencies, it'll have to remain on Calamar. To the better for the Night Riders, too. Well, I guess there's one thing to be thankful for out of all this. What's that, buddy? Well, as SET members, we all have 20-20 vision. Thank you. 
as the SET prepares to disembark Calamar, a galaxy has been spared an outbreak of the light plague. The dangers of Glowstone have now become true and apparent. As the search continues for new energy sources in the universe, man will reflect on this time and place as an offering to understanding on the threshold of the unknown. Well, old boy, it looks as though you were uh, cleaned out. Not quite. I got a real rare gem here. It's worth 50000 yeah. What's it called? Glowstone. Let me see that. Hmm. Just let me put my glasses on, have a better look. Oh, lovely. Lovely. And it glows, too. Yes. The Night Riders of Calamar was written by Dudley Brown and Lee Hansen and starred Linda Gary, Chuck Olson, Bruce Miller, Phil Diskin, and Corey Burton, with special guest Peter Leeds. Associate producer Jeff Allen. Music director Tom Rounds. Our engineer was Stu Jacobs. Assistant to the producer Laurie Tyler. Technical consultant Peter Skye. Alien Worlds was created, produced, and directed by Lee Hansen. And so, until next time, this is Roger Dressler inviting you to join us for another journey into Alien Worlds. Alien Worlds.